here we are. Hi. <laughs> uh, Jizzo Chats. And we are, we have a special thing going here. We are in Edinburgh, Scotland, and we're talking to my Jizzy Pearls Love Hate bass player, Christian Kimmet, way up in Edinburgh, who uh, runs Bannerman's, one of the premier venues in Edinburgh, uh, Scotland, not England. <laughs> I'm glad you got that right. Oh, I learned it the hard way, dude. <laughs> if you, if you, one of the surefire ways to get your ass kicked is to go into a Scottish bar and call it England. You may, you may not get out alive. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Or maybe a swift head, but. So how are we doing? I'm good. Uh, just chilling out, preparing for the show here tonight and stuff like that, and all is good. You? Yeah, everything's uh, everything's open up in uh, Scotland, right? All the venues are opened up after the uh, dreaded, you know what? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's we we are officially back at full capacity again. Badass, badass. Uh, we'll go over that whole nightmare. Um, let's get the Wikipedia nonsense out of the way. So, like I said, you run Bannerman's, which is pretty much the go-to venue up in uh, Edinburgh, Scotland. It's part of the big rock circuit that all the bands that tour end up playing. And it's a cool venue. How long have you uh, run that place? I've been here for about 12 or 13 years. Something oh, easy oh, like that. Good. It's been a long time. So, when yeah. did I first play there? It was a long time ago. Ah, uh, Jesus. Um, I, I, I don't know. Maybe about ten years ago, something like that. It was, I, it was, it was a while ago. It back was, when uh, I was a wee lad. Just when you're a wee boy. <laughs> okay, so like I said, you play in um, my version of Love Hate in England with uh, Stevie Pierce and, and Scotland. Uh, and Charles Evans, the new drummer, we can't not mention him, even though, of course, because of the lockdown, he has yet to play a live show yet. <laughs> yes. He's in that weird limbo. Um, and you also play in Warrior Soul. You've played in Warrior Soul for a long time. Um, how long you played in that band for? Uh, I, I hooked up with Corey around about 2013, so about nine, nine years. Yeah. Okay. So, and you guys just did a record. We did uh, out on bail. It's called. It, um, it actually came out a week before our Love Hate album came out. Oh, um, good. And yeah, it, it, it's it's cool. It's it's doing great. Um, you know, it's 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 just a killer record. Um, it was the, the second album that we actually brought out during the dreaded. You know. Um, because we did a covers album at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you've been in that band forever. Corey is a survivor like me. I mean, I think the first Warrior Soul record came out around the same time as Blackout, probably around 1990 period. And we played with Corey a couple of times uh, with the original Warrior Soul. And I remember he always, he came out with this big book I don't know if you remember that. The poetic days? Well, yeah, he came out with this. It was like a grimoire or something. I don't know. It was like, he was like this magical warlock. And he came <laughs> out with this uh, big book. And that was kind of the opening thing. They had an opening. And um, yeah, I mean, Warrior Soul, he's, like I said, he's been around forever. And uh, he's done a lot of great work. He's, 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 he's like the punk rock. He's, he's always shaking his fist at, uh, authority which uh oh yeah you know which is his thing and he still is yeah well, oh, good yeah. for him so and you also played on my hell california record i did indeed yes yeah you played on two songs you played on bruised and battered and acid babe and um yeah it came out really good and that record's great so uh good Good the idea. album is killer, and all the feedback I've had on that album is like, pe people are saying it's the best thing you've done since Blackout, you know? And I, I think you've probably heard that yourself, and it's, uh, 
Yeah, it's well, it's it's killer. It's a great album. I mean, it's good to hear. Oh, you know, yeah, of course. It's it's good to hear. I don't know if it's true or not, but but I I'd like to think that it's definitely better than the uh, Frontiers record that I did. Yeah. I think the songs are better. I think it sounds more like a rock record. And and you you and Stevie did some great work on it. Of course, we had to do it um, across the ocean because I, I couldn't be there because you guys were closed down. So you uh, mailed me the tracks and then we fixed them and put them in there and you know did all the magic over here in the States. And uh, yeah, Stevie did great work and you did great work and it's, it's a killer record. And I suggest anyone, uh, it's on Golden Robot Records. And if anyone wants to check it out, uh, they will. So because you live in Edinburgh, which, People in the States uh, don't really know that Edinburgh is one of the most beautiful cities in Europe, I think. And I later agree. on, people should check it out. We're going to do a short walking tour. <laughs> uh, yes, we are. I'm going to take you to some of the, the historical points. Yeah, why not? Why not? Because I know that a lot of people in the States probably will never be able to go there. And like I said, I've had the uh, uh, good fortune to go there and actually hang for a few days and see some of the sites. My wife loves it, you know, and uh, it's got a lot of history, a lot of dark history. <laughs> yes. And uh, so we'll go check that out. But let's 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 chat with you for a little while. So you originally hail from the Orkney Islands which is uh, way, way up north. Yeah, yeah, it's, and, like, it's, uh, it's ridiculous. It's, uh, my dad was a lighthouse keeper, actually, and uh, that's, that's how I ended up dealing with all that. Were you stuff. born in the lighthouse? <laughs> <laughs> no, but my was conceived in one, apparently. <laughs> oh, nice, nice, nice. Well, that accounts for how f***ed up you are. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so Scotland is, it, most people that even go to Scotland really don't even know that, that, that the farther north you go, it's, it's pretty remote. Oh, yeah. You know I, mean? I mean, I've only been as far as Aberdeen, but it goes way the hell up there, and then it goes to the Orkneys and to the Shetland Islands and stuff like that, but it's pretty remote. So what brought you down to Edinburgh from Orkney? I mean, you could have stayed in Orkney and started up a GNR tribute band and you you, <laughs> you could have ruled that place but you chose to come down to uh, Edinburgh so what was up with that yeah I I mean I basically right growing up I was kind of like music's always been my thing and uh I was kind of like you know I'd air guitar to a bunch of stuff and all that and I was like, I need to go and see live music. I need to experience live music. And in Orkney, you couldn't do that. You mm -hmm. know, there was like at the time, you know, we were we were kids in our bedrooms, like everywhere else in the world, learning how to play. And uh, there was there, there was no audience there, so we were like, we moved. I I decided, you know what? As soon as I can, I'm going to get off the island. And um, off I the island. Food. That's funny. Get off the island. <laughs> Sounds like lost. Um, but yeah, it's I'm really uh, up there. I mean, it's it's really remote. I mean, there's not much up there. Oh, there's nothing. I mean, if I wanted to come down for something, you needed a day to travel down, mm. enjoy whatever you were doing, then a day to get back. You needed three days, basically. Right. You know, and I was like, I, I can't cope with this. And to be honest with you, up there, there just wasn't anything happening. So unless you wanted to be a fisherman or something. Yeah, like that. I mean, like, I, you know what? Fisherman, dangerous job. I get that. I, you know, I, I respect those dudes. Farming, I'm not into, you know, cow shit and stuff. So I was like, you know, enough cow shit like where that. you are. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Coos. Indeed. But, indeed. Uh, so, but yeah, no, I just, I needed a way. Well, that's cool. Well, that's cool. So you, you basically, you grew up there. And, um, and like I said, Bannerman's 
is is probably the go-to venue uh, for rock bands in, uh, in for sure in Edinburgh in Scotland, and um, uh, it's a it's a cool place. Bands go there, and the thing about where it is, it's an old town. Yeah. Right. And uh, so that building, actually, the building with the apartments and everything that you that Bannerman's is in has been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. I mean, what did it used to be? Oh, you can trace it back to like the 1800s. That's okay. the earliest records they have. Um, and it, it used to, you know, it used to be like a like a sort of leather upholstery place. They used to do mussels here, as in the, the seafood mussels um, and all that. Not like and Gold's it, Gym kind of mussels? <laughs> yeah, well, that's it, yeah. And um, yeah, you can still see them pumping weights through there. Nice. But, um, no, it was uh, yeah. It's it's just been a bunch of things like a cobblers and and things like that. And uh, eventually, it got to the point where it became a bar. Uh -huh. But then it, you know, kind of materialized into a music venue. And then uh, I came in and kind of did my do. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, you you turned it into something and and it's also haunted. Yes, it is haunted because uh, it, when you go upstairs, because bands stay up, there's an apartment above the bar and that's where bands stay when they travel and everyone stays there up in the apartments. And um, my wife says that she was in the kitchen and a cup was in one of the cabinets and it flew out of the cabinet across the room right in front of her yeah i believe it i actually just did a podcast with some actor dude recently and uh we went upstairs and did stuff and it was yeah, uh, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I, I, always, that. I always stay in the unhaunted bedroom because because i don't want to wake up in the middle of the night with some succubus you know what i mean um <laughs> but the but the the place next door the uh the building next door the room next door rather uh I've heard stories that they've seen spirits walking into the closet and stuff like that. And then they disappear. There's like this weird part of the building that's bricked up. I, I don't know. Maybe there's bodies in there, skeletons, like a Edgar <laughs> Allan Poe story or something. It's weird. Yeah, it, 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 it is weird. I mean, there's a bunch of people that have come back to me about stuff and going, Dude, I saw this up there. I experienced that. And it is. It's like, it's not just upstairs. The whole place right. is on it, if you, know, you yeah, believe well, that. Well, first you attribute it, you know, to the drugs. And then, um, <laughs> and then when you realize that uh, it actually, I mean, Edinburgh has a very dark history, especially Old Town. There's a lot of crazy stuff that goes down. There's catacombs actually under Bannerman's. And that whole block that they do guided tours to, and in these catacombs, you know, there's there was some crazy shit went down. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, the thing is, part of the whole thing is the the plague when the plague happened in Scotland, they they would put the poor people into these areas, and then there was a fire, and basically thousands of people baked alive. And they reckon some nice. of that is people trying to get, you know, escape from it still to this day, you know, human bread. Wow. Nice. Nice. Good, <laughs> good, good metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we'll show some of that stuff when we go outside, because like I said, it's, it's a, it's a very picturesque city, but it does have a dark past, but your club, like I said, is part of the circuit that bands tour all the time. And you have bands come in all the time. I mean, My Love Hate Band has played there probably a dozen times over the years. All the nationals go there. Every All the US bands go to Bannerman's. That's part of the thing, the, the circle that they make. So you've, you know, some of the bands that have come in, talk about that. Well, I mean, do you know what? Bizarrely enough, one of the first bands I ever booked was Warrior Soul way before okay. I was a part of it. And then it developed into the likes of uh, Faster Pussycat. And then, you know, I booked Love Hate and shit like that. I mean, I, I, I remember still the first time I got offered 
love hate and it was going to be you and gilby clark but right. then 2000, you actually contacted 2002 me and said or, it's not happening 2002 or 2003 or something like that yeah around about that. yeah 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 um, that was the first time that i sort of brought my version back over there and it was it was quite a learning experience because uh i just got not by you specifically but I got ripped off so hardcore by promoters because I was just learning that yeah. everything costs money along the way. And so at the end of the tour, I had this little wad of cash. And then all of a sudden, well, you got to pay for the work permit. Oh, you got to pay for the van. Oh, you got to pay for this. You got to pay for this. I think I came home with $200. Oh, wow. For my, <laughs> for my troubles. Yeah. So yeah. But anyway, that's you live and learn. And now, We've been coming there, like I said, uh, forever and ever. And um, let's uh, let's uh, have you booked the choir boys lately? Um, I had the <laughs> choir boys on the books. <laughs> I do have an ulterior motive here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, things went went a little bit tits up with the choir boys. Um, so I was fortunate. My friend Tyler from the band The Dogs the Moor. Right. He uh, he said to me, I could fill that date for you. And I was like, okay, let's do it. And it just so happens one of his best friends is Spike, a guy that used to be in the choir boys, hmm. you know, like it or not. Interesting. Go but, on, uh, go on. And uh, so me, me, me and Tyler had it. We decided, you know what, let's have a show. And hmm. uh, so we booked it. It just happened to fall on the same date the choir boys were supposed to play here. I needed the date filled. So right. you know what? We filled it. It's going to be Spike and Tyler's Hot Knives, as they call it. And you'll get all the classics, Choir Boys, Dogs to Moor, maybe something else thrown in. Who knows? But mm -hmm. uh, Well, for people yeah. in the States, um, I remember when they were the London Choir Boys and yeah. uh, way back in, the, in the, my time. And they were huge. I mean, I've known those guys forever, and Dogs to Moor were huge in England, not so much in the States, but very big in the uh, UK. Yeah. And um, of course, I don't, I'm not privy to what happened with Spike and those guys, but, uh, and I hope that, you know, they can work things out, but, but I'm Team Spike, as probably you are. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm Spike. I've known Spike a while, you know. Yeah. 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 And, you know, I mean, he's he's the guy. He's he's the most visible part of that band. And he still sings great. And he's he's the nicest guy in the world. And like I said, I mean, I hope that they can patch things up. But, uh, you know, I think that will be a good gig for you, Spike and oh. Uh, Tyler. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know what? It would be like if me and Stevie and Charles turned around and went, oh, yeah, we fired Jizzy. Yeah. We are love hate you know well, i know exactly. you thought about that in the past <laughs> yeah we were gonna bring in Corey. yeah <laughs> nice but yeah no not at all but you know it's like it is that bizarre thing i mean it's like if me and stevie were to turn around and go yeah oh yeah we'll go under the love hate banner without <laughs> jizzy right well you know i don't know like i said i mean i don't i'm not privy to the information but I know Spike and, and he's a friend of mine and, uh, and I'm rooting for him to continue on and, and whatever endeavor he decides to do. He'll and, do uh, okay for himself. And let the shit talking begin. <laughs> of course. Oh um, yeah, no, he'll do okay. Yeah, actually uh, it's, it's a funny story. Uh, I always wanted to have an English band. I mean, we talked about this. And I always want to have an English band, I, the, the Chuck Berry analogy of me being able to go over there and have guys that, I mean, not only is it economical, but it's just, I, I think it would be more fun to travel with a, with a, you know, a bunch of guys from the same country and, and shooting the shit, being in the van, all the, all the shenanigans that goes on. And so I tried for years and years and I couldn't get it together. And then I talked to you in 2015 and you hooked me up with a, a Scottish band. Yeah. 
called the King Lot. And um, what's the bass player's name again? Jason. Jason. And um, you hooked me up with those guys and we rehearsed back and forth via video and stuff like that. And, and in 2015, I actually did a tour with them. They were the opener and then they played as my band. And Jason was by far the best part of that band. He was a uh, great bass. Oh, he's a talented guy. Yeah, yeah. Things great, plays great, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, he still stands out as, as like the best part of that band. Anyway, long story short, that's what led to us having a conversation and then you getting Stevie on board because he was in Warrior Soul at the time. And then we ended yeah. up Nikki through Stevie and, and that's how I got my version of hate together and um and our first tour was 2017 so it was like the 25th anniversary of wasted right 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 and uh like i said i i flew out there i met those guys i'd never met those guys before and we stayed at a friend's house and we sort of woodshedded the tunes for a couple of days and and um and i remember when I was talking to you, because uh, because uh, playing bass in Love Hate is not easy by any means. Correct. Uh, and uh, it isn't Blackout in the Red Room. It isn't Four Notes. <laughs> There's a lot of gnarly shit involved. in. Uh, and I just told you, I remember I said, if you can play Yucca Man, you can you can play anything in this. And I, and so you would shed it, Yucca Man. And, yeah. and then you, you would show me, and, and, it's, and then when you played it, I go, well, killer. You know what I mean? If you can handle that, you can handle anything. And so we, uh, I went out there, we rehearsed, and we did um, a couple of weeks. We played uh, Hard Rock Hell. I think that was your yeah. second show or something like that. Something like that, yeah, it was insane. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> played in front of a couple of thousand people and I'm sure you guys weren't nervous at all. <laughs> <laughs> I had actually done it with Warrior Soul before so I was okay. Uh -huh. but, but, no, it was it was it was nervy because I mean I, I I do think it was the second show and it was just like I think we played Bannermans as a kind of warm up and sure. then it was like boom let's do hard rock hell and uh, do you know what that venue actually I, that was the bigger one. It's like, I think it's about 5,000. Mm -hmm. And so that was our second show. And then we played th two more tours. Obviously, before this, screwed everything yeah. up. Um, we played in 2018, and we played, and our last tour was 2019. And then, obviously, I had a tour planned, and we pushed it back. We pushed it, I think I pushed it back three times. And, um, yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how you dealt, because you run that club and Scotland had some gnarly restrictions when all this went down. Um, t tell, tell everybody how you kind of dealt with all that. Well, I mean, I, I, like, I still remember the day that they said, right, you're going into lockdown. And I was like, shit. Okay. And uh, we were, we were supposed to have like a bunch of, you know, I had my whole year and a half planned with shows coming here. And uh, it was just taken away from us. And uh, I was like, right, what do we do here? So we ended up, we did like a, a fundraising campaign thing. Just, you know, because I wanted to, I, I still wanted to do music to some degree. So basically what I did was I started getting bands to come in record behind closed doors which may or may have not been illegal i don't know um but the fundraiser was set up so as i could pay my sound guys my camera guys because we wanted to make it possible and then we were going to stream it and then uh, we were allowed to open very briefly and when we were allowed to open briefly we weren't allowed any live music so i started showing it on the screens i was like this band is playing this day Bring your fans down, bring your friends, let's, you know, drink and watch. And shows. you had and you had people there. That's the thing. I mean, it sounds it sounds kind of silly. Here we are two years later, but people 
wanted to support the bands. I mean, you know what I mean? They, 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 they still wanted to go see some semblance of live music and to have it just cut off. I know speaking for myself as a musician, it was just, you never would have thought that this would ever happen in the world yep. that, you know, all of a sudden you can't play live anymore and, um, and that's it. And, you know, it was supposed to be two weeks and it ended up being years. It was. Yeah. I mean, and, and you know what was even more brutal? So, you know, I thought I'd like, you know, you know, made, made an advance by going, you know what, I'll get the people down. I'll, I'll let them watch their bands on the TV. But then, and only in Scotland, might I add, they decided no background music, no, none of that. And I was like, what the f***? So we came up with a QR code system where people could come in, scan it, and then watch their friends on their own mobile devices and stuff. So we were always trying to be a step ahead. But uh, every, every turn we took, the government were sitting there flipping us off when we walked around. You, Scotland was was <clears throat> actually more restrictive than than um, England. Oh and yeah, I mean, it, it, we only just lost the whole mask thing about two weeks ago. You know, we were we're basically the last place to lose the masks. It was insane, crazy. You know, I mean, and and that was the way they did it was the most this thing it was like you could walk into the venue you had to wear a mask but when you were sat at the bar you could take it off if you went into the gig you could take it off but if you go for a piss put it back on and i was like same the here lot? same here it, it, it yeah. you know i think everyone agrees that it it, it kind of doesn't make sense if you if you kind of look at it in from the big picture but um but yeah, I mean, it got so bad that you were actually uh, doing to-go pints of Guinness. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean if like, you give Guinness and styrofoam cups or something, how did you do that? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was ridiculous. Let's just open up and do takeaway booze. Yeah. You know? And who's going to come to a bar and buy it to take away when they go to the off-license? And buy it for half the price. Yeah, yeah, it, it's 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 weird. I remember. Um, here's a little tip for for anyone traveling the UK. Uh, across the street from a hotel is the post office, and if you're you get paid in pounds, obviously, if you're touring, you know, and Scottish pounds are different from English pounds. <laughs> yada yada yada. But you got all this paper money. So uh, the best and the best way to change money into American dollars is to go to the post office. People don't know that, you know, uh, if you go to generally people go to the airport and they have those change those changes and stuff like that. But you can get a totally better rate if you go to the post office. That's just a little tip yeah. for American bands touring. Or Europe, uh, don't wait and get your money and change it at the airport. Go to find a post office. And yeah, absolutely. You get a far or, better. These days, if you trust the promoter you're dealing with, get them to bank transfer it. Yeah. Well, it took years to build that trust between you and I. I mean, it was <laughs> touch and go for a while. Um, of course. All right. Well, you know what? Let's, uh, you want to go outside? Sure. All uh, right. Let me, let me make my way through the, the caverns. Okay. Uh, I don't know if people can see Bannerman's behind me. Yeah. But, see, uh, it's, it's all old brick. I mean, that place has been around forever and ever. Oh, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the, the, 1800s basically <laughs> i uh let me just quickly do this hopefully we won't lose connection there it is there's, yeah, there's, the, there's the venue 
Yep. And uh, go outside. It's a bit busier out here, so it. Okay, so we're outside in the cow gate. Show them the cow. <laughs> you, uh, can I can I share with you the plaque? Oh, please do, please do. I shall. Let's uh, see if it. Hang on. I don't know. If this is gonna... that, that whole building is like a national landmark. I mean, it's it's. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't. I don't know what you can see. I can see okay. the. Uh, well, scroll down there, my son. Come on, keep going. There we go. LH. LH. Yeah. So yeah, th that that band love hate have played here before. Yeah, so, I uh, made it black. I made it black. So we're in old town. Town. we're in old town, um, Edinburgh, and yeah, it's gnarly, dude. It's all cobblestones. It's it's uh, it's totally trippy, and. Uh, up the street is Mother India. There. Mother, oh yeah, do you want to go over there? No, no. No. <laughs> but I'm okay. a good fan. I'm a big fan of Indian food, and um, and I remember, I said to you, I go, how do I find this place? And you go, just follow your nose. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. You can smell it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And let me tell you, dude. Um, they say. This guy's so cool that his shit doesn't stink. You go eat at Mother <laughs> India. It's going to smell like the meat market in old Calcutta. <laughs> I mean, you're going to have it a like tandoori for days. Yeah, it's it's badass. So um yeah, let's uh let's 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 take a walk. Okay, we'll go up the hill? Yeah, why not? Up 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 this way. I'm going to try walking backwards. All right, well, don't get hit by a car, dude. Well, no, I'm not on the road. I, I know how the pavement works. Yeah, the flat is upstairs. That's where everyone stays. Oh, yeah. The haunted flat. And, yeah, which um, is... Okay. And next door to you... I think there's a band there tonight. I'm sorry, what? I said I'll take you up to the flat, but there's a band up there just no, now already. No, nah. they don't need to see that. They. <laughs> there are three brands from it. I don't know if this is working or not working. Oh, you're um, still there? Yeah, you know what? Uh, yeah, I am still there. Um, I think the catacomb place is next door, the place where they, they do guided tours of the catacombs. Yeah, just back down there. Yeah. It's yeah. a. Yeah. This place is like a big bar place. And so a lot of times, when the bars let out at two in the morning, dude, and you're trying to sleep because you got a gig the next day, and you got these drunk fuckers singing Oasis songs at two thirty in the morning. Oh, well. Speaking of Oasis songs, the band last night tried to get me up to play an Oasis song with them. Did, did it was you? A five, it was a five string bass. It wasn't in the right key, and I was just like, you know, fuck this, and just handed it right back and walked off. I was like, I am fucking doing this, and I, and I let them have it later because, as you always say, there's always somebody with a phone. Yeah, and I that's, was just that's, like, I've been doing this shit. Yeah, you can't even get up and and do a jam because someone's yeah. going to record you, and then that'll be up on the internet forever. So yeah, yeah. My yeah. advice so, is jam with no one. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair enough. Do you know, actually, speaking of jams, when I, I was last over in L.A., I bumped into Householder at the Whiskey. Doing okay. The ultimate jam. Right on, right on. Yeah, yeah he, 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 he was on all right form. All right, hey, do me a favor. Turn your phone around and kind of show people. Okay, so we're on the Royal Mile. All right. Yeah, my wife loves this place. It, it it is totally killer. I mean, it's a little it's a little touristy, but it's totally badass. I mean, look at that church. It's totally beautiful. Oh, yeah. Oh, here we go. You want some little oh there's some of the lovely Scottish talent kicking off about bullshit. 
Um, what are you, what, what are you talking about? Oh, some some girl was just going mental, shouting and screaming at nobody. Just, oh well, uh, you know, that's just you know, you know that's just a Thursday. Thick, thick Scottish accent, right? Hang on. Um, oh, she's still at it. Hang on, right? I'm going to turn around as we go up the Royal Mile. So you are going up to uh, uh, the Witch's Well. That's it. I'm on my way to the castle. Yeah, because th at the top of this road is Edinburgh Castle, and um, they used to burn witches up there. They did, witchy, witchy. Yeah, they... Yeah. It says on the, there's a plaque at the witches well, it says 300 witches were tortured and burned. But apparently, according to uh, the internet, it was more like 3,000. Yeah, it's, it's insane. I mean, it's like, they, and it, they reckon that Scotland was like the worst place for burning witches and drowning witches. Because yeah, they used to that, drown dude? them and, you know what? What's up with that? <laughs> well, don't f with that at all, you know. <laughs> you know, welcome to Scotland. Enjoy drowning and burning. So, uh, well, yeah, it's uh, um, there you go, there you go. That's yeah, lower your there you go. The sun is kind of that, 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 that's cool. Okay, yeah, so it's, we've got a street performer right now. You got any bagpipers around? I'm sure we'll come across one on the way up. Yeah, I mean, they're everywhere. They're in the supermarkets. They're... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we don't have self-scan things. We have bagpipe scanners. Nice. Oh, that would be yeah. awesome. You guys should do that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, this, this walks about another five minutes until we get up the hill. That's cool. That's cool. Um, <laughs> We'll talk a little bit about the history. I mean, you know, you've been, it's, uh, this place is very, very old. All these buildings, I think up at the top is the oldest pub in Scotland. I think it was there since the 1600s or something. It's, it's crazy. Oh, I, I mean, it's, it's insane. The history that goes with Edinburgh, I mean, it's like, like honestly i mean just even look at the buildings yeah you know killer i mean it's, we don't uh, have this in the states that's that's why a part of this so-called mini guided tour is just to show people i mean some people will never ever get to go to edinburgh and you know go to one of the kilt shops and get a kilt well that's it or you know the and whiskey gaffs and there's some there is obviously some stuff suited for the general tourist trade of i mean course. that's in, that's in any city but uh but it, it really I mean, is if are if, you aware of this are you aware of this thing oh oh yeah 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 you're supposed to spit on it or kiss it yeah. just like that <laughs> what is it? I spy, I don't know if I if it showed up, but uh, it's the heart of Midlothian. They call it. Okay, so you spit um, on it. You don't. You don't pee on it. Well, but, you know, I I do kind of need it, a piss, I but I don't want to go to jail. You would pee on it. <laughs> There's a fair chance that would happen, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I I'll try and not do that today. Yeah, um, there's a like I said, they used to parade the witches up this same path that you are walking right now. They would parade these poor women up to the top of Edinburgh Castle and in the courtyard, they <laughs> would burn them alive. Yes. And there's also in Princess Street Gardens, which I'll be able to show you when we get to the castle, they uh, they drowned them as well. Yeah, I mean Crazy. it's like you know what? <laughs> it's like how how fucked up is it when they're like, we're we're gonna prove you're a witch if you survive being burnt or drowned. How many people are gonna actually survive that shit? Uh, 
I don't know. I think you'll probably find the charred remains of one of my ex-girlfriends up at the top. So. <laughs> well, you know what? At, le at least your current wife, Nina, is a good witch. Yeah. Yeah, she's, she's good. She's good. She, she walks up and down um, this place all the time. There's a couple of little cool little stores that um, are there. And um, there was this dude that used to hold this 10-pound owl this huge owl on his, uh, and, and obviously for, for like a fiver, you could hold the owl and get your picture right. taken with the owl. And she did that. There was this, but the thing weighed probably 10 or 15 pounds. So it was, uh, yeah. Yeah. If you're into owls. <laughs> yeah. We, we don't have owl sanctuaries. We have one-off owls in Edinburgh. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. We're approaching the castle, by the way. Okay, good, good, good. So this is one of the oldest pubs you were talking about, potentially. It looks like they're doing some restoration. I mean, that shit wasn't there when I was there last time. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, they've, some places have been doing up quite a bit, um, and which is great, considering, you know, so many places were closed during the whole thing. The fact that they've got the money to do it. Right. It's good to see that it's open because I remember this whole thing was just empty, obviously, during during this. So uh, it's it's just really nice to see tourists coming back and um, and to see it open up again. It, it's it's uh, and it's uh, and it's a nice uh, sunny day in Edinburgh, which is rare. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Did you guys ever go to the witchery while you were up here? We were supposed to go to the witchery, um, uh, but my tour here is. Yeah, my tour got canceled. Um, oh shit! Okay, but the restaurant. Did you ever eat in the restaurant? No, no, no. I uh, I don't know if you can see in there. I can't see shit. I just see your your my reflection. Indeed. Uh -huh. I went for dinner with Tammy there one night, actually. It was, uh, to, to quote him, I've eaten a lot better for a lot less. Nice. <laughs> well, so, he would yeah. know. I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a tour dog like, like me. He's been, uh, he's been doing this forever and ever and ever. Uh, I oh, remember yeah. when I saw Faster Pussycat where they were playing Bannermans. And Tammy had just gotten sober. I think this was probably five years ago. I guess he's. This is when we played together. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right on. You were at the top, Edinburgh Castle. There it is. Bob. Lower, your, lower the phone just a, a tad because the sun. There you go. You can see it. Yeah. It's it's pretty badass. I mean, I've toured there before years ago. But uh show go to the witches, go to the witches well. That's Can you see that? The witches well. Yes. It's well. And actually there it is. <laughs> Just wow. for Nina. Yeah, she's going to enjoy this cuz she uh she always makes a pilgrimage up to this place, up at the top. And can uh, you see the sign? Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's it's. Uh, what does it say? Hundreds of witches were. This fountain designed by blah blah blah. Um, nice. This bit tells you more about the witches. Hundreds of those convicted of witchcraft were strangled and burnt at the stake, on the execution ground now covered by Edinburgh Castle's Esplanade. Which is here. Yeah, lovely, lovely. Lovely, Isn't lovely. Isn't that awesome? But it wasn't yeah. 300, it's more like 3,000. Well, yeah, exactly. So, you know, uh, it, was, it was more the days of, you know, exaggerating on social media. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's got 3,000 likes. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got, there you go. There's your city out that way with the water in the distance. Yeah, tilt it down just a hair. Oh, okay. Yeah, Edinburgh is one of the most beautiful cities um, that I've been to. It's a little pricey 
to live there. You know what I mean? As you know. And because uh, I was, you know, I, I was entertaining ideas of, of moving there one day and and uh, setting up shop, open up at a little taco stand right outside of Bannerman's maybe. <laughs> we could do haggis balls. Little, little haggis tacos. Yeah, exactly. Why the f*** not? Yeah, hey, why not? I mean, like, right. let's look at this. Okay, so in the distance, I don't know if you can see the hills, but the kind of scars on the hills. Til tilt your phone down just a tiny. There you go. There you go. Right there. Right there. So there's even a dry ski slope in the distance. Welcome to modernization. Wow. Yeah, the, 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 the city is, uh, well, it's, it's, uh, it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's slightly better than Vegas. I don't know about that, dude. It's older than <laughs> it's older than Vegas, but I don't know if it's slightly better. But uh, well, you could be right here. There's no mirage. Okay, well, um, let's let's call a halt to this nonsense. Yes. And um, what what do you got going up in the next uh, uh, weeks or so? I mean, what's happening with uh, you and Bannermans? And, and uh, are you playing with anyone right now? I, I'm actually gigging tonight. Um, I joined a local band called The Reinforcement. Um, and we're going to be, we're playing tonight with that band from LA called Falling Doves. Um, then tomorrow at the Glasgow Hard Rock. And then we're playing somewhere on Sunday as well. Um, and we've just been in the studio, done a new recording, um, right. which we'll we'll be releasing at some point. Um, you just you just went and saw Stevie in Blackpool. He told me that you went to. Uh, I did, yeah, and uh, it was great. You know, wow. it was it was nice to catch up with him. Um, yeah, for sure. I I hope to jam with him again at some point soon. We can maybe do something together. Oh, I'm sure you will. <laughs> I'm sure we will. Even if it's just running blackout in the red room. Yeah. But, but, yeah, um, just... yeah. Well, that's cool. That's cool. It, it's uh, it's good to see you. And it's good to see you're still alive and well. And that Edinburgh has opened up again. And um, that warms my heart to see... Uh, to see everything back open and people going to see that city and uh bands are touring again yeah and uh of course like i said i was supposed to be out there in this february but it didn't work out because uh well it just didn't work out i have a lot of shows this year with qr but you know we will try and look at 2023 for absolutely uh, me to come back and play with you guys yeah. and uh we can we can once again stink it up in the van <laughs> no that's you in the dressing room just before showtime oh yeah right all right <laughs> all right mr uh mr vindaloo poo over here <laughs> okay well good let's let's uh let's uh end this interview and it's good to see you again and um and uh, any any last words as you as you make the torturous walk back down the Royal Mile? Um, go buy Jizzy Pearl's Love Hate Hell C A album, and uh, also buy the Warrior Soul one while you're at it out on bail. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go back to Bannerman's, and uh, I'm gonna you know go go do my do, and I uh, get prepared to play for this evening, and uh. Yeah, that's that's kind of it. I actually brought my copy of the album with me, but I left my fucking bag sitting in Bannerman, so you're not going to see it today. But I I have a physical copy in the UK in Scotland. And you have the Bud Cross, and I have the Bud Cross, which is also sitting in Bannerman's. Yeah. Which uh, yeah, but I don't know if it'll ever like reappear officially, but it's there. Somebody actually recently was was talking to me. And they were like, oh my God, you blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, fucking whatever. Then he was like, and I was like, you know what, dude? I have the cross here. Mm -hmm. And he was like, no. So I brought it out and let him get a picture with it and shit. Well, you know what it's like? It's 
it's resting. It's like Excalibur. It's resting in the <laughs> lake. And if, if there's danger or if Scotland is threatened, then we will go to the, we will go to the lake. And once again, we will wield the mighty Bud Cross. And, <laughs> and yeah. I'll do that for you. King Excalibur. Indeed. Okay, I'm going to uh, stop the recording and um, yep, Jizzo Chats with Christian Kimmett and um, peace and love and we'll talk to you soon. Say, I wish we would have, uh, I wish we would have had an owl or a bagpipe player. That would have been badass. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been. <laughs> it would have been awesome to have you just be well this is just you know how we live <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know chasing haggis through the streets yeah, <laughs> yeah. Up, on, cool. up on whiskey and fudge <laughs> <laughs> that's only you know him oh, me and charles i hear it oh there we go oh yeah you want to see a bagpiper Hang on a second. <laughs> on cue. Normal. Again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn around, watch him for a little bit. You what? Watch him for a little bit. Okay. I love that shit. I love you that. are? You love that shit? I do. I do. I love bagpipes. Oh, he's playing that song. Yep. There you go. I'm going to go and put a pound in his box. Please do. Please do. <laughs> Have you ever tried to play bagpipes? They're, they're, I have actually. They're totally the and, hardest thing to play in the world. Oh, it's fucking, it's a nightmare. Yeah. I, uh, I went to this dude's house. Do you want to keep watching them or will we go? No, I keep going. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, we, um, I was trying to get into this girl's pants once and her dad was a bagpipe player. So, uh, I said, oh, I'd love to have a, you know, shot at, doing that and so she brought them out and fucking, <laughs> I spent half an hour trying to you know play her dad's bagpipes just to play with her well maybe next time you're over we'll get you a set of bagpipes and a kilt yeah yeah <laughs> and have people throw shit at me yeah <laughs> you're appropriating our culture <laughs> <laughs> yeah don't take the piss out of us yeah brave heart yeah.